What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons. Today I'm going to share with you guys nine different ways that I use science to make my art. So, science. Weather, ecology, physical science, outer space. Science is a tough subject when it comes to things like that and more. But artists like myself, believe it or not, not only use science to draw, but also to create art. And I'm gonna show you in this video what they are. So, let's go. Number one, we got seasons. And that includes the changes in the weather. As a person who draws backgrounds, I need to be able to tell what kind of weather is happening in whatever scene that I'm drawing. Is it snowing? Is it hot? Is it raining? Or is it the perfect weather to fly a kite? Also, wind is moving air, and air is always invisible, so I need to be able to depict that in my drawing to show that things are moving somewhere in the wind. Whether it's trees and plants that are blowing this way, or if it's hair moving along with the breeze of the wind or whatever, or if it's just leaves blowing this way or that way somewhere in my drawing. Number two, we got ecosystems. Ecosystems are about the plants and animals within an environment. For example, a desert ecosystem has deserts, camels, sand, and it's always super hot. Rainforest ecosystems have plants and trees, a lot of things green, animals like sloths, snakes, wildcats, and things like that. An example of me putting this to the test would be if I make an illustration putting a polar bear in a rainforest, it would kinda, in a way, tell a story, but if I'm trying to be informative when I'm making these illustrations, it wouldn't make sense. So that's why I included this concept in this video. Number three, we got color. Woo, where do I begin? I use color literally all the time. Words cannot exaggerate that enough. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I use colors to draw, and I made how to color and how to illustrate videos using colors. And that in my opinion, making an illustration in black and white is boring. Come on now. But although I use colors a lot when I'm drawing, I feel that it's important to know why red comes first in the rainbow and why purple comes last. But to explain that, red, orange, and yellow have the largest wavelengths out of all the colors. That and the fact that they're very vibrant and very bright and they give a sense of warmth. That's why they're classified as warm colors. All the rest of the colors have shorter wavelengths in comparison and it gives you a cold and kind of cool feeling. Those right there are called cool colors. Now that right there makes it easy for you guys to understand this concept. Also check out this playlist right here for everything color related on my channel. But bringing up something that relates to the electromagnetic spectrum. There you go. Ties into my next concept, which is light. Whenever you're making an illustration or even just a rough sketch, it's important to know where your light source is. Besides that, let's look into opacity. I use this more when creating digital art because it refers to how transparent something is. Something that's opaque doesn't allow light to pass through. And I use this for all my traditional works and most of the time for my digital works. But because of that, I can cast a shadow onto a wall or something, which ties back to what I said about knowing your light source. So there's a couple vocabulary words for you. Number five, we got anatomy. Another concept that I use all the time. A lot of the characters that I draw are human or human-like. So I feel it's important to understand all the basic body parts and joints that we use literally every day. You know, the basic arms, legs, neck, stomach, chest, and back including the bones that hold them together called joints, like the shoulders, elbows, hips, knees, phalanges, and other joints. There are also a few things to consider when you're drawing anatomy, like the shoulder is three heads long. Things like that are called proportions. Stuff like that you can look into if you're drawing anatomy. And to me, it's just a guide to help you understand the anatomical parts of the human body. But I'm not gonna sit here and waste time talking about all the different proportions that there are on a typical human body. But for your convenience, I did make a playlist on how to draw a few different body parts, like the legs, the feet, the hands, the torso, and a whole lot of other stuff just like that. Link to that playlist will be right up here if you wanna go learn more about this concept. Next up, we got matter. Because oftentimes when you're watching my videos, you'll often hear me say, you'll need to get this perfect or it's okay to go crazy. Because it's important to know which states of matter have a definite shape and which ones don't. Because if it's something that doesn't have a definite shape like water or air, then it's okay to screw up. Let's say you're drawing a background with some wind in it and you wanna make the wind visible. You don't need to have a specific line or a perfect line because wind has no definite shape, wind is supposed to be invisible, so you, there's no need to pressure yourself about the specific movement of wind. And the same goes for water. 
But when it comes to things that are solid, that's a different story. Next up, we got friction. Friction is what happens when two things rub together, like your feet to a sidewalk. Or like when you're driving on ice, your tires can't really grip the road because of ice, you start slipping. But I feel like this is another mini concept because there's not much to talk about. But I like to think about friction as when my hand glides across my desk or my paper when I'm drawing. Sometimes I want less friction, sometimes I want more friction. And in some cases, there might be too much friction so I may need less. Maybe I want to slide my hand going crazy making a, a series of zigzags or whatever on my paper. That's actually never happened, but hopefully that was a good example. Next up, we got data storage devices. Now, I learned on my own and as a kid what data storage devices were. At first, I learned how to use an SD card, and I always kept an SD card and an adapter with me at all times. And keep in mind, this was as a kid, too. Then I eventually learned what a flash drive was when I hit either middle school or high school when it became a part of my school supply list. And now, up to this point, I know what external hard drives were because I started storing my video footage on it. But talking about data storage devices, first comes bits, then nibbles, then bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, terabytes, and so on. Like, I'm gonna throw a little chart up here on the screen that shows you how many gigabytes are in a terabyte and things like that because there's a whole lot of zeros. And last but not least, we have adolescents. And I like to use that as an umbrella term for girls have breasts at this age, boys have facial hair at this age. A lot of female characters that I draw have full grown breasts. And that's because those characters are meant to be at least 16 years old. A lot of male characters I draw don't have facial hair, but no matter what age you are, not every male has to have facial hair at a certain age. Like I'm 21 years old and I have little to no facial hair, but I do know a couple of guys who have facial hair before they hit my age. But if I'm drawing little boy characters or little girl characters, I don't want to give them adult-like features, even though I'm used to drawing stuff like that. So that's why adolescence is pretty important when it comes to me drawing, you know, human-like characters. Because I need to give them some features to help my viewers determine what age this character is. Oh, this person doesn't have facial hair, so he must be young type thing. So if you're an art major in college, I hope that gave you some enlightenment on why science is being taught to you in college. But it's nowhere near your major. Because I've taken earth science, physical science, biology, health science physics and all that stuff. I took those science courses while in college, so believe me, I know how it is. But anyway, that's the end of the video. If you liked it, give it a like and a comment. If you're new to my channel, I do lots of drawing tutorials, speed drawings, art challenges, and more. So if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I